Doctrine and Devotion, a podcast exploring Christian faith and practice from a Reformed Baptist perspective. My name is Joe Thorne. I'm the lead pastor of Redeemer Fellowship in St. Charles, Illinois. And I'm Jimmy Fowler, executive pastor at Redeemer Fellowship. Oh, done. Uh, we're done. Now we're just doing what we normally do, which is hanging hang out. out. We can hang out. That's I easy. I know, I know. But then we got to pack up. We got to go before five. We got to be at home by, before oh, five. Oh, I know, because Governor Pritzker, Pritzker yep. declared martial law or no, something? No, no, stay at home. It's like a constitutional violation? No, is stop it, is? it. Here it is. I don't know, but I'm the... getting the militia together, uh-huh. and we're going to the cigar uh, you, shop. Oh, That's what we're Babino? doing. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Babs is like, individually, we can't do much. But what, together, together I'm like, calm down, bro. <laughs> I'm just going to go hang up with my family. Yeah. Any shopping you got to do real fast? No? I do, oh, because you can go I got, well, I got to, I, I have to get, those uh, Zycar beads that you put in your humidor oh my God. because oh my I bought a box of cigars for the for the shutdown, yeah. the meltdown. That's not a meltdown. Whatever it is. Stop I, don't it. Know what, I don't know what it is. I know, but you're, don't, don't cause panic. I'm not causing panic. You're trying, you're causing and panic. And CNN causes panic. I'm not causing panic. Right, I'm just, right. I'm just ready. Yeah. I'm just ready to rumble. Uh-huh. But I had a box of cigars and I got to put them in my humidor and yep. I need a humidification device. So I got to do that. Yeah. And uh, then, um, I'm on, I'm, then, I'm, then I'm good. I'm out of Miller Lite, so I got to go. Oh. I know. How'd that happen? I know. That's weird. I'm pretty sure Greg took some. Oh, yeah. Greg's been dipping. Dipping in. Like last night. Mm-hmm. I know there was... I know that there I'm was surprised something. He, 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 I'm surprised he likes Miller Lite because he, he's kind of slumming it then. He's a fancy lawyer. Esquire. Yep. With his little scarf. Greg, and, I know it was you. Yeah. All right. Well, we can deal with that. Yeah. Uh, well, I don't know when we're going to get to it. Everybody's locked in their houses. What, what do you mean we're going to deal with what? Greg, how are you going to deal with it? Oh, we, we shelter in place together. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so this, this goes into effect today at four, today, five, 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 five. So we gotta, we're going to wrap this up. Yep. All right. So we got a message in, and I thought this would be something we could talk about. Let's do it. So a guy named JD wrote in and said, the subject is communion and, and COVID-19. All right. Hey, guys. Love the podcast. I'm a pastor of a rural church uh, in eastern New York. My question is about communion and COVID-19. Is it possible to partake without the elements? To possibly do symbolic breaking of bread and pouring of juice, since we're Baptist, juice, while calling the congregation to remember the broken, the body broken and the blood shed without partaking of the elements? Just a thought I was having and would love to hear your sarcastic but informed advice. So we're gonna mime it? We're gonna <laughs> so mime it. Well, yeah, they don't mind. They don't do like it's all fake. They don't, you know. Yes, yes. You say. Yeah, that that's that's it sounds like what he's talking about. I've actually been asked this question before. No, no, it's a, a what sa- like symbolically. It's a symbol. Uh, they said he said this person uh, is allergic to water, so I'm just going to baptize him in air. <laughs> I have heard that one. Okay, yeah. no, no, and you know, I mean, it's listen. There, there are certain extenuating, extre- you know, extenuating circumstances or extenuating right? circumstances. Extenuating. Extenuating. No, no, excavating um, circumstances. Okay, there you go. Extreme, yeah. So, so okay. I don't want to. I don't want to make light of uh, no, an it's individual. A, it's like, a fair question. It's a, yeah, the fair question is, how do I partake of the ordinances that God has called us to, and I want to obey and to partake in, in the midst of uh, something that we're providentially hindered from? Okay. Yeah. So let's let's answer this on the front end halfway okay. by addressing: Can you do it without elements? And then we'll get to at the end of all of this: How do we handle this with? COVID-19, isolation, social yeah. distancing, and yeah, all yeah, that. Yeah. All right, so... Um, Let's start with what's necessary. Well, okay, what do you have to have in order to do the Lord's Supper? The bare minimum. Bare minimum. What do you have to have? Bread. I think, is that is that fair? Yeah, got to have bread. Yep, bread. Um, gotta, it, could, it could be gluten-free. That's fine, I guess. It's uh, bread, right? Yeah. And, uh, oh, Brian's got oh, something. Pastor Brian's got something. Thank Thanks, you. Brian. Oh, that's so I guess nice uh, it's never really oh, yeah. doctrine and devotion. Okay. We typically, uh, I thank you for the apple juice. Yep, it's uh, good. That's good apple juice. All right, so um, you gotta have bread. Gotta have bread. And you gotta have wine. Gotta have wine. No, obviously it could be juice. Yep, you juice know, is fine. Fruit of the vine. Fruit of the vine. I you got the grapes. Point. You squish out what's inside the grape. Yep. Boom. Okay. That, that counts. Right? Those those are the only two we need. Th- that's the only element Th- we need. Those are the two. Uh, elements that we would consume. I okay. think there would be another element. 
we call it the, the church. church. Yeah, you got to yeah. have the church. You if you have don't have the, the church, you got to have the leadership of the church. You can't just like throw bread and wine on the floor and go, there's communion. It doesn't <laughs> Enjoy. work. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Got to have the church. Is the Lord not good? <laughs> he is. Now, to have the church yeah. means more than having some people in a building, right? Oh, yeah. What do we mean by church? What we're talking about is the gathered people of God on the Lord's Day, uh, worshiping um, and being edified by the the pro proclamation of God's word. But, so, yeah, go ahead. So, so you have a congregation. Congregation, yep. You have to have leadership. Got to have leadership. Right? Cause, um, and the reason you have to have leadership there is because when we're partaking of the Lord's Supper, um, we're supposed to fence the table. Yeah. We're supposed to examine ourselves, but also before we uh, do this, but we're also supposed to have an administration of the elements um, with the practice of discipline because some people may not be fit for it at yeah. a particular time. Yeah, yeah. And this is then overseen by um, the elders the of the church. The officers of the church, yeah. So this is why you've got to have bread and wine and the church, yeah. the, the church. That doesn't mean every individual to constitute a local assembly, but yeah. it means you have to have uh, the, a body of the people mm -hmm. with qualified leaders in place, officers. So, I mean, this is why we, we've dealt with this in the past, uh, why yeah. we don't have communion at our community groups. Right, small I mean, groups. Yeah. yeah, small groups or, or missional groups. Um, now, it's been asked in the past, right? Yeah, um, but it's, it's, a good, it's a good question. It's a good question. It's a valid question. Why, right? do, why do people want to do it? Well, I think because they're gathered together uh, and they want to, I, I think part of it is they want to partake of the ordinance with people that they're close to, right? Yeah. Like you're, you're studying God's word together, you're praying for one another, mm -hmm. you're encouraging one another. Uh, and so you want to partake and remember what right. what the Lord has done uh, for you and through you. And they love the Lord's Supper. Yeah. You know, they understand that it's a means of grace as yeah. it preaches the gospel and is received by faith. And yep. we do it every Sunday at Redeemer, yeah. um, which is another reason why we're like, some people might want to do it when churches only celebrate the Lord's Supper once a month. Yeah. Because if they miss that month because they happen to be or serving that week, yeah. or that, yeah, well, if they miss it that week, then not only are they going to miss it for that month, it'll be longer than a month before yep. they have it again. And it's, it's a it's chance. It's six miss weeks, it. six months. It's not minimum. Typically a year. Yeah. yeah. Could be. Could be a year you miss it. And so, like, this is why some people were like, well, maybe we should do it in our small groups as well. Yeah. But because we think you have to have bread, wine, and the church gathered. Uh, that's how we see it practiced in the New Testament. Um, we don't do it in small groups, yep. um, we, and we don't we don't do this at weddings. Yeah. Um, now I've 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 been to a wedding, and I actually gave part of did part of the ceremony for a wedding for some friends, and they did communion there. Um, now, did you partake? No. No, you didn't. No. Okay, no. And it was just actually for them. So it was very, it was just the, it was, very, it was just, oh, yeah. those two, okay, just taking two. their first, I've, I've heard of that, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people do it. We don't do it. Um, we don't encourage it. Um, again, we don't think anybody's going to hell or that they're like, you know, blaspheming Jesus. Yeah. We just don't think it's the proper context or place for the practice of this ordinance mm. that Jesus gave to the church. But what about, what about at a conference? Like not this conference because there's just three of us in the room right now, <laughs> yeah. but, um, but like at T4G, which was just canceled. No, oh, was it really? Yeah, I guess we're not going to have uh, communion there. No, uh, no, I don't. I, I, I don't think it's appropriate at a conference. There's pastors there. No, but that's not. That's not the plenty local, of pastors. That's not the local assembly. That's not. No, but that's not m my pastor, right? Like that's not. Well, my, what if that, your pastor was there? No, no, you know it. Don't even sit what there. If, you stop it. Stop it. Stop it. I'm I don't. Yeah, you know, you're trying to, like, you know, throw me off. No, uh, uh, for me, I, I don't think it's appropriate because uh, I think communion is with my local congregation, the people that I've covenanted with uh, to uh, to walk with, right, as as a body of Christ right. under the leadership that uh, I've covenanted to, to serve under and to uh, be held accountable to as well as hold accountable, mm. right? So so, so would you then? Yeah, so you're telling me, no. how many times at T4G have you taken communion? Well, they don't have it there. At TGC? They don't have it there either. What'd you just say? I said T4G, but I said, what, what? I said they're not going to have it, but I they don't. I didn't imply that they ever have had it. Oh my it? goodness, so you're no. sitting here making something no, up. I was I've just never saying, been there. I'm not going to so I didn't know. Um, no, they, they don't do communion there. Oh. And we, uh, so we wouldn't that do it. shocked me. For small, small group weddings, conferences, or at home. Um, oh, yeah. And the reason that, that we're addressing these particular issues is because in the context of the coronavirus pandemic, yeah. Churches are not gathering yeah. um, m for the most part. And uh, like in our state, we're not allowed to gather. 
Um, and it's not because they, they hate Jesus. It's not persecution. It's yeah. a health concern, temporarily suspending things. Um, and so people are saying like, well, hey, couldn't we do communion uh, in our homes since um, we can't gather as the church? Jimmy? I mean, it's a valid question. It's yeah, a valid totally. question. Uh, and so this is where I think it's... I just don't, I, I don't think I would, right? I think I would uh, refrain. I don't think it's the same, uh, but I'm also not going to look at others during this time um, and look down upon them, right? Is it right or is it wrong? Oh, you're trying to make me do it like that, huh? Hmm. Mm. Is it, can it be wrong if you're providentially hindered? Like if you're providentially hindered from partaking in a way that you normally would and are convicted uh, that you should be, is it is it then wrong to, uh, because there's a block in the way, to partake in another way during that season, Joe? Well, that's the question. Yeah, right? that's what I'm asking you. So uh, is someone sinning, Joe, if they partook during the season, uh, so let me clarify the question. Yeah, and, no, and I, I, back just clar- I just clarified it for you. So you're providentially hindered, Joe. So here's what I'm going to ask. Here's what I'm going to ask you. As, if, if, as a if, pastor. If you, I'll answer it if you can. That's fine. Here you go. Go ahead. Now, if. Are, um, so for clarity, are they providentially <laughs> hindered it from just doing it a particular way? Or are they providentially hindered from doing it at all? Like, you know, in other words, is the way that we do it a way to do it? Or is it the only way to do it? And I don't mean how. I just mean elders. Uh, church body elements. Oh, good question. So in, in, in my mind, I think we are providentially hindered from doing it properly. So I wouldn't do it improperly. I think if you, if you don't have bread, wine, congregation, elders, you can't do it. If you're doing it's it, not you're, on, yeah, it's you're not doing something else. It's not the supervision of the office of the church. You're yeah. doing something else. Now, is it sin? I don't think it's sin. No. I just don't think it's appropriate. Um, I'm not going to hate on anybody that's doing it. I literally just got done saying that like three minutes ago. And then you tossed it back at me like, I right, continue. I have no idea what you're talking about. I know, right you know, right? You, you, listen, magic here's Mike? the problem. Thank you, you, you Magic all, Mike. You get all nervous. You get all nervous if you don't have an answer in your mind. And you're like, uh, I don't want to. I wanna, felt like I gave an answer four minutes ago. And I, I, I just I, said this. Okay, well, I didn't. Weren't paying attention. Okay. No, no, no. You said, are you providentially hindered from doing it the way that you usually do it? Uh, That's a different no, 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 question. No, 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 no. That was exactly what you said. After That's a quote. Thing. That said That's that after the whole thing. Rewind. That's a quote. Rewind. Play it back. Let's do it again. Uh, Google it. <laughs> all right, so I'm going to say no. Uh, I don't think you should. And we wouldn't encourage our people to do it. We would say we are right now providentially hindered from observing the Lord's Supper. Um, Just like we're providentially hindered from gathering together. Now, can you virtually gather together? Well, I mean, virtually, but not really. I mean, so you can listen to a sermon, but we can't hear one another's voices singing. Now, if you are live streaming and we're all there. But we're not there. Virtually all there. Okay, so virtually we're not, all there. So we're not all there together. No, no, That's but what we, it is. But we we're together are, while not but, being uh, there. Yes, yes. yeah. Okay. But we're there on the interwebs. Yeah, we're not. We're not there on the interwebs. Well, yes, we are. No. We're on. We're not there. We're, we're, but we're there on the interwebs. Not right? there though. Yeah. So we're there. <laughs> we're but the we're all on the interwebs together. Together. Yeah. So we're all together on the web, but not there. <laughs> so it has to be in the building. Well, yeah. I don't think it. It's not corporate worship if you're not there. I mean, it's just not. It's something else, it's, and it's a hybrid of a thing. I don't think it's a bad thing. Um, but I, don't, I think people are getting way too uptight about what we're doing in the meantime. I've seen guys saying things like, it's not preaching if, there's, if you're preaching through your camera to an audience on the internet. Well, I don't know how that's not preaching. There's, there's an mm-hmm. audience that can hear you and you are proclaiming the word. I don't yep. see any way in which that's not preaching. Now, it's not the normative preaching that happens on a Sunday morning. It's, it's a little ideal, bit different, yep. but it's still preaching. Um, yeah, if, it's, if, if it could be a lecture, it could, it could be preaching. Yeah, so that was just, you know, there's some weird stuff there. But I, I think that, um, yeah, I, I, these are all hindrances. On, it, sometimes we are hindered from doing the thing. Yeah. If you don't have wine and you don't have bread, but you do have Coke and chocolate chip cookies. Is that the Lord's Supper? <laughs> I'm not, that's not even a bad, that's a real thing that happens. 
in certain countries, oh. in certain places, they can't get bread and wine. There are certain places, but they'll have different elements, and they're like, well, we'll just use these instead. So yeah, the question is, is it the elements that matter? But it's the breaking of bread and, so, and the vine. So how, how far do you press it? Yeah. Um, so get I, it, press wine. <laughs> <laughs> I did that on purpose. Oh, I so, thought you were that clever. No, I was like, I'm not well that clever. done. No, no, no. Well done. <laughs> so I think that on the one hand, we say sometimes we're just providentially hindered from doing the thing at all. Yeah. If you're allergic to water, then I think you are providentially hindered. You're not going to get baptized. And I don't think that's a, I mean, it's, 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 it's a frustration that we have in a world that's broken yeah. and we, we don't have access to it for whatever reason. So fine. And God, I don't think, uh, is displeased with us in that situation. If we cannot gather, we cannot practice the Lord's Supper. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it, if you're doing that, it's not the Lord's Supper. It's something else. Yeah. But uh, I'm not wor worried about it if a family's doing it, especially in these times when yeah, they're yeah, just yeah. like we're trying to figure things yeah. out. So, Joe, I mean, you've taken communion for hundred plus years. What would you say is your worst communion story? Have you had a bad experience? Like I've had awkward experiences. Oh yeah. But I haven't had. I don't think I've had. Yeah, I'm just thinking I've had awkward experiences. Well, there's They're always like, typically like a like, except, you know, like okay. with a priest, you know. Yeah, I did take communion as a new Christian at a Catholic church, even though I wasn't supposed to because I mm. you know, I'm not a part of the Catholic church. I wasn't baptized at all yet at that point. And I was like, "Give me that cracker. Where's my juice?" And there was no juice. I remember just standing there and I was just like, you know, my, I wouldn't I didn't feel like I, I couldn't take it after a new, you know, I was like I, I can't take communion. But my mom was like pushing me up and everything, yeah. and I'm like, I can't take this. Right. And so I'm like, yeah. they're supposed to be like take a blessing, you know? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just stood there, and like I kept my mouth shut. Mm, 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 mm. You know? And the guy's like, I'm like, mm, mm, mm. He's like, and I just kind of like kept doing this. Did like, you think you were mute? I don't know. Really? <laughs> Maybe I was like, mm. And I kept putting my head. I was like tilting for like the blessing, you know? And uh, he's like. He's like grabs my arms, puts them across my chest, and then he gave me the, the oh, little blessing. I'm like, okay. oh, this is really awkward. I walk back. I'm like, I didn't want anything. I just wanted to yeah. move on, move fast. Yeah. You need to stand up to your mom for once in your life, Jimmy. I can't, man. Yeah, no, I. I'm um, sorry, mom. When I went up to the Catholic guy for the for the <laughs> wafer, he held it out, and I was like, Yeah, okay. I'm not. I'm not you know, yeah, putting that in my mouth. I'll I'll grab it and do it. Um, no, I've had. Well, obviously, we have the those churches where. They're having you dip it instead of sip it. Oh. The intinction thing. We've done that. Have you ever had like the two in one cup? I like, have with a, not. With a little seal yeah, on it. Yeah, I've seen it in the in the you gotta, magazines. Like, I didn't know you're supposed to shake it first. Oh, it's fake wine. Fake well, you're, you're supposed to shake it. I guess because I, maybe the sentiment like it, it it separates or something. Whatever's going on with that juice. Juice. You gotta like shake it first and then. And, yeah. and then take, shake it, then take it. Oh, shake it, then take it. Shake uh, it, then take it. No, we don't do that. Oh, I didn't uh, shake it. it, mm. it ta I, I, I almost spit it out. I did. We, Jen and I had communion one time at a church years ago, um, and the guy had broken the bread and he was handing out pieces, and his fingernails were dirty and black. That was a little mm. weird, a little uncomfortable. Mm. I didn't really, you know. No. A little. No. So, oh, gross. so uh, can you use just the invisible? Pretend elements. I don't think you can. That's not the Lord's Supper. Yeah, I, I don't think you can substitute the elements for uh, cookies and milk. I don't think um, you can just pretend and then it's the Lord's Supper. But what you can't, what are you doing at that moment when you're miming and, and physically talking about it? You're preaching the death of Christ. That's a good thing. Just preach it, yeah. talk about it, have people meditate on it, and long and yearn for the time when we can get back together again for corporate worship and celebrate the ordinances together. That's. Uh, that's what I look forward to. And it makes me, and hopefully it'll make us all hungry for yeah. and to value corporate worship all the more as we go through these times. Now, uh, we ain't gone yet. Oh, we ain't not, gone yet. We, come on, we've I only was, got, we have an hour. I was trying an to- An hour get, and 10 minutes. We got to pack up. We got to, I got to go and get those hydration things for my humidor. <laughs> I got to, I got to, I was trying to get out of here and then- Oh, Rob Black. Oh, we Rob see Black. you. I, we weren't looking at any comments. I was supposed to say something. <laughs> but um, he now feels like he has to address your comment. All right. So Rob said, um, hmm. oh, yeah, I got to find Did it again. Did you forget it? All yeah. right. He said, Did Joe not say some countries uh, don't, have, don't access. have access to bread and wine? But now he's saying you can't take milk and cookies. Right. That's But well, that was my argument the whole time. Even if you don't have access to bread and wine, or juice, right? It's yeah, the same, yeah. same essential element. Um, then you're hindered. 
So if you don't have access to it, you're providentially hindered from taking it. That's that's that that's was the, the argument. argument. Yeah. Um, somebody else uh, asked a question about Jimmy oh. when Jimmy said, um, "No, I can't go to that conference and have communion because even though there are pastors there, my pastor isn't there." And somebody's like, "Well, then you can't have communion when you go to another person's church." Because your argument Ooh. is, but the, I, I would say the argument well is. Well said, well caught. Uh, I would say the argument is not that it's not that you're, it's not a local church, which is the yeah, first thing you said. It's the first thing. It's, it's not local a local church. Yeah. Then you said Thank my Thank you for clarifying that. You're right. That's, so, that's yeah. definitely a distinction that uh, I was not trying to make. Yeah. Because we are open communion. Who's that person? See, I could take criticism well, and uh, where you couldn't take Robert Blacks. Who's that? Uh, I don't know. There's too many comments on here. Thank you very much. I, I received that well. Yeah, so Ryan Mann. Thank you, Ryan. Ryan Mann. Thank you, Ryan. Well, we'd love to hear your thoughts. You can follow us online on Instagram and Twitter, at Doc and Diva, or on Facebook slash Doctrine and Devotion. You can head to the website, drdevotion.com, that you can contact us. You can send mm -hmm. it for the email blast. You can hit up the store, joefostore.com, and grab, grab some, some gear. gear. You could do that. Fresh pod every Monday and Thursday. Blog post on Wednesdays. Later.